You're listening to The Greg Kelly Show. Andrew Giuliani, Republican candidate for governor. Uh, he certainly was spectacular last night and in all of these debates. Andrew Giuliani, how you doing? Craig, doing great. In Binghamton right now, where they're actually picking up the WABC. And I was just talking to somebody who says they listen to you, they listen to Birdie, and said they listen to some other guy named Giuliani, who I think comes on right after you, too. <laughs> hey, where in Binghamton are you? I used to live in Binghamton. I lived there for uh, almost a year. Love that I'm town. Actually in, I'm actually in Recreation Park right now, and we're going to have to stop over by the Ita- uh, get a little Italian food because it is some of the best Italian food, not just in the state, but also in the country in Binghamton and Endicott. All right, well, listen, you had an amazing night last night, and it's not because you got lucky. You're obviously gifted at this stuff. Uh, I think Zeldin's campaign went up in smoke right before our eyes. Uh, Just give me your thoughts on last night, and uh, how'd you get so good at this stuff? (laughs) (laughs) It must must be going on with guys like Greg Kelly and learning and and learning from guys like Rudy Giuliani. Look, the truth is, and I think this was so important, uh, we had three debates to make our case to New Yorkers, and for me, I wanted to make sure that I focused the overwhelming majority on an action plan that New Yorkers could see, because, look, Lord knows, Greg, whether it's crime and how it's gone out, out of control, whether it's bail reform, whether it's these unconstitutional mandates, which kept me out of the room in the first two debates. Uh, we need real leadership. We don't need somebody who's going to spend their time squabbling and flip-flopping. And unfortunately, I think uh, that's what Lee spent his time focused on. I wanted to focus on an action plan. Uh, and I think that's what uh, hopefully the plan uh, was conveyed there to New Yorkers over the last three debates. And, and we'll be closing hard here between now and next Tuesday, June 28th, and asking New Yorkers to come out there and voice their support at the polls. Who would you rather run against, uh, Kathy Hochul or Tom Swazi? Tom Swazi has shown some spite and spirit in his own debates with Kathy Hochul. You have a preference? You know, this is always a tough one, and I know that they sometimes ask coaches this in games, do you like to play against this team or that team? So, you know, I'm focused completely on this race. I can tell you that I think Kathy Hochul has been more of the same with regards to the Cuomo administration, whether it's from the health mandates, whether it's from not caring about actually getting crime down. You can just go look at her state of the state speech, and she never once mentioned bail reform, Greg. Uh, Or you can look at the corruption and what we saw from her husband profiting off of the Buffalo Bill Stadium deal and her lieutenant governor getting fired within the first seven months. Uh, It's just more of the same corruption from the Cuomo administration that we're seeing in the Hochul administration. So I would love to run against her record uh, and put that uh, right up to New Yorkers and say, hey, look, we haven't had a Republican governor in 20 years. Uh, It's time for a change. That or you're going to continue to see New Yorkers flee the state for places like Florida and Texas. I don't think New Yorkers should have to choose between feeling safe and New York. I think that should be an option where we can feel safe in New York again. So if the folks didn't see it, you can find the debate on Newsmax.com. It's there. It got really raucous at times. You were very much above the fray, actually, uh, Andrew. I thought in a pretty classy way as uh, as he was going after, Zeldin was going after Harry Wilson. It got brutal. He did take a nasty shot at you, criticizing yeah. you for uh, you know something you did when you were three years old. It was totally <laughs> ludicrous. What happens after that kind of debate? Do you guys all shake hands? Do you look at, you know, what was the what was it like after? Afterwards, or did you just go off your on your own way? No one's talking to anybody because everybody's steamed. Well, look, I I shook his hand. I said, "Good fight." You know, I I went out there and I laid it out for the world. And this was kind of the, the one hit that I had against Lee because I, I wanted to really make sure uh, that the world saw that that Lee flip flops on issues. A few years back. He said that President Trump's past statements were racist. Uh, He lied to New Yorkers on Monday about that and said that he didn't say that and then said we selectively edited it. We didn't. We posted the complete video. I I wanted to see, shouldn't you show New Yorkers that if they choose to support Lee, they're getting somebody who's going to flip-flop like that and somebody that doesn't have his mind. Um, But to me, I wanted to spend the overwhelming majority of my time focused on the issues, as I said before. But certainly it it was, uh, you know, shook Rob's hand, shook Harry's hand, and I shook Lee's hand as well. Um, Look, whatever differences divide us, and and there are major differences, we all have to agree that come June 29th, after hopefully that Republican voters come out and speak and say they want Andrew Giuliani to be their nominee, but if the people say something different, then I will get behind whoever can knock off Kathy Hochul. I believe that's going to be me. I'm looking at the polling. It looks really good right now, but we need to make sure that we have something far better than Kathy Hochul come November 8th. Well, Andrew Giuliani... 
uh, you have found your true calling, public service. This is it. You're 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 amazing at it. I'm uh, I'm hoping for the best on Tuesday. Many good things to come, great things to come for you and the people, I think. Andrew Giuliani, hey, where can people go to uh, if they want to chip in or help? Go to saveny.org and uh, make sure you come on out to the polls on Tuesday, June 28th and vote Giuliani. And, and Greg, as always, it's an honor to be on with you, and I love seeing what you're doing right there. I don't know if it's Greg Kelly or Rudy Giuliani, but I keep seeing WABC is getting better and better ratings. That's a pretty good one. <laughs> One two punch, I'd say. That's right. Thanks so much, Andrew Giuliani. SaveNY.org, right? SaveNY.org. Andrew Giuliani, thanks for being with us. Take care. Thank you, Greg. All right. You bet. You bet. Hey, one thing that they get really, really concerned about uh, uh, Donald Trump is uh, not listening to his advisors. He's got to listen to his advisors. Why doesn't he listen to his advisors? His advisors were telling him that this uh, election fraud claims were baseless, without merit. No, his advisors. He wasn't listening to his advisors. His advisors. He has to listen to his advisors, right? Fake news, cut 35. Bill Stepien describing how he and other advisors told Trump in the days after the election that the odds of winning were slim. Advisors told Trump election fraud claims were false. Trump's aides told him he'd lost the election. Several of Trump's advisors testified that they tried to convince the president that his claims of election fraud were false. Oh my gosh, all these advisors. These advisors. They were advising him something. Why didn't the president listen to them? Because all the president does, right, is he gets there and he, he, he talks to their advi- the advisors. Advisors. With their advice. With their advice. He's the president of the United States. Quite frankly, if he doesn't want to have any advisors, he doesn't have to. He doesn't have to have advisors. Look it up. Where is it? does it say in the Constitution about his advisors? And that the president must listen to the advice. He doesn't. And thank God he doesn't. And you know what? Throughout history, we have had great leaders who have blown off the advisors and their advice. Anybody ever hear of Winston Churchill? In the heart of World War II, when Germany had the upper hand, was pummeling the hell out of London day in and day out. You know what they were talking about in the Winston Churchill cabinet? Surrendering. Surrendering. We'll get very decent terms if we surrender at this point. Hitler is not a madman, after all. We could get a very decent uh, decent arrangement. It actually happened. The advisors. And Winston Churchill did not listen to his advisors. He was captured very powerfully, very beautifully, in a film from about five years ago called Darkest Hour. Gary Oldham played Winston Churchill. Listen to what Winston does to his advisor. His advisor who says, surrender to Hitler. You ready for this? It's great. Cut 36. You cannot reason with a tiger when your head is in its mouth. Oh, gosh. You guys, you cut off the whole good part about where he's actually talking to the advisor. Why do you guys do that? The advisor. All right. So the, the look at my TV show. And it was. Anyway, the guy's like. Mr. Prime Minister, we are being beaten severely. If we surrender now, we'll keep our army and possibly keep our heads. Hitler is not a madman. He won't be outrageous. How many times will you wrestle with it? It was great. It was great. All right. Uh, Former county executive of Westchester, former Republican nominee for governor, and maybe the next Republican nominee for governor, Rob Astorino, who uh, had a great night last night at that debate. Rob Astorino, welcome back. How are you? I'm feeling good. I uh, I love how this is unfolding as people are paying attention. And yeah, it's been interesting, these three debates, the dichotomy between the candidates and the supposed front runner, who I think has had a meltdown in all three. But um, I, I'm loving where we're at, you know, and I'm hearing from everybody everywhere. We're, we're right now we're on I-90. We started the morning in Buffalo, then we were in Rochester and Wayne County, now going to be in Syracuse in a little bit. Wow. All right. So you're making the, you're making the rounds. Um, just do me a favor. Make your case. Why Rob Astorino? Why should people vote for you? I think it's there's two reasons. One, you've got to look at all the candidates and say who can actually get elected in November, because that's what this is all about. Who, who has the executive experience and was able to do it, has a record to prove it, that's me. 
in Westchester. You know, we cut taxes, never raised them, and held the line firm at $1.8 billion in the budget for all eight years. Nobody does that anymore, but I did it. And I had a Democrat county board, and, you know, I did things uh, that they didn't want me to do, but I had strong executive experience. I brought the gun show back. I, I made, you know, I vetoed the sanctuary county bill that they passed, a uh, clinic access bill that they wanted to, you know, hurt and, and, and you know, have criminal charges and civil charges against those peacefully protesting outside an abortion clinic. So I've got the spine of steel, and I know what it takes to not only be elected in a blue county like Westchester, which is sort of like New York, but also, you know, looking at my opponent in Lee Zeldin, he had his chance. That's the biggest issue. Unfortunately, when he was in the Senate majority in Albany with Cuomo, he was a reliable vote for the Cuomo agenda, which is why he's getting unhinged in these debates when he's challenged about that. He gets very angry and defensive and, and starts, you know, resorting to childish names. <laughs> but that's really important. That says who you were. And you enabled him. You voted for the Cuomo budgets and all the junk in it. And when I took Cuomo on back then, I realized he was a corrupt thug. He was supporting the agenda. That's a very big difference between us. Hey, you mentioned like, the, the the meltdown. I want to play it a little bit, all right? This is uh, yeah. not sure which moment this is, but he gets very defensive. It's very strange. This is Zeldin, and uh, let's hear a little bit of uh, last night. Congressman? The, the, the ease that they just keep lying is just incredible. Uh, the reinvention of, of history as to what happened. <laughs> you, uh, you didn't try to knock us off the ballot. It's really insane. Let's, let's hear it. You, you didn't try to knock. I'm also endorsed by the yes conservative no. party. Answer the question, Lee. Answer the Again, question. No, I'm saying it's false, and uh, I'm, I'm endorsed by the conservative party. I am uh, also not going to lose this primary next Tuesday because everybody is focused on winning is the only option. Losing is not an option, but it is important for all of us to be one voice this time next week. It is a it is a hard fought primary. There are passions inside of this room and outside will, will of the state. Will you will you support oh, the I'm winner? I'm be supporting the primary winner next Tuesday. So the answer is even, no. Even if it's not you. you. You just learned a lot about him. The answer is no. I, listen, it, I don't think about losing. It, I refuse. It's to a lose. simple yes no question, Lee. Simple oh, yes. I'm going to be supporting the winner of the primary next Tuesday. Ago, that he would just you, like you could not say yes to that. The fact that you had all the president's past his race. You can't all the news of New York. Gentlemen, answer this. All right, that's pretty intense there. That's you. That's you. You learned about him right there. He won't promise to endorse you or Andrew or Harry Wilson. Will not make that commitment, and that's very rare in politics, actually. In, in 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 what I would call mainstream politics. Well, look, that says that's a window into his beliefs and his soul. I have said I'm going to win this primary, but if I don't, I will support any of the Republicans because we need to win in November and put an end to this chaos and dangerousness and unaffordability. But Lee won't do it, and um, you know whoever wins the Republican primary is going to have the conservative line as well. The conservative will give the nomination to whoever wins the Republican Party, so we'll all be united. But to have somebody like Lee Zeldin, who, again, was voted the most thir one of the top liberal Republicans in the House by all these ratings agencies, more liberal than Liz Cheney and Adam Kinziger in his votes. When I brought that up, I mean, his head exploded. But that's the truth. <laughs> and just defend it. You know, I mean, but that's that's what Republican primary voters should know. All right. Well, look. We got to keep it there because, uh, well, the, the election commission keeps us to special time requirements when you guys call in, and we're grateful that you did, by the way. So, if anybody wants to help out, Rob Astorino, uh, how do you do it? Is it robastorino.com? Yeah, or follow me on social media. But the biggest thing is vote. Vote for me, Rob Astorino, in the primary anywhere between now, early voting, and Tuesday. And, you know, you might like another candidate a little bit more. But you have to say who can actually win in November, and that would be me. All right. Rob Astorino, everybody. Great job last night. Good luck, sir. All the best. Safe drive on the highway, too. You guys drive like crazy. I'm not saying you drive fast, but you drive a lot of miles when you're campaigning. Seriously, well, we're, we're be safe. A, we're, we're meeting a lot of state troopers along the way. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good stuff. Thanks, Rob Astorino. Thanks. I wonder what that's like running uh, running for office. You know what I mean? I mean, constantly, constantly, constantly. You're listening to The Greg Kelly Show.